We've reached the point in the season again when NFL trade rumors start swirling. And this year, the Chicago Bears are expected to be a lot more sellers than buyers. You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter, at CoxSports1. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, at Locked On Bears. You can like Locked On Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked On Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. And make sure you hit that subscribe button on the Locked On Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making the Lockdown Bears podcast your first listen today and hopefully every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs, the most comfortable shorts, pants, and sweatpants with built-in liners. Go to birddogs.com and use our promo code LOCKEDON and boom, a free Bird Dogs rope hat with your pair of Bird Dogs. On the show today, we look at who could be on the block for the Chicago Bears at the trade deadline. Not necessarily players that the team would be in a hurry to get rid of, but players that could interest other teams that the Bears don't have as much incentive to keep given where the team is currently in the team building process, that you could send these players to a contender who might be willing to pay a premium because they're a contender and they're desperate for this player to help push them closer to that Super Bowl, and you could get a better, probably a draft pick in compensation for these players. So it's not necessarily guys like, like, oh, I think the Bears should get rid of this player. I think the Bears need to get rid of this player, but players that could attract attention from other teams that we should keep on our radar. I think the big one that everyone is sort of waiting for, watching, bated breath to see, do they move him now? Do they wait until the offseason? What is his long-term future in Chicago look like? Robert Quinn, defensive end, of course, coming off of an 18 and a half sack season probably was never going to replicate that in, you know, back to back years quite to that level, but it's also been a bit of a disappointment this season so far. I mean, he's, he's got one sack on the year. I believe that was in week two against the green Bay Packers. And other than that, his contributions have felt few and far between. Now I think that's, I think a little bit of an overstatement. Certainly he's not playing up to the level that we saw last season. But I think, A, he is in the top five in the NFL among edge rushers on the highest percentage of pass rushes facing a double team. He is one of the most double-teamed pass rushers in the NFL this season. And you can kind of imagine that would be the case when the other pass rushing threats are al Kadeen Muhammad, Justin Jones, and Angelo Blackson. Or, you know, I mean, Travis Gibson, yeah, and Dominic Robinson, yeah, but like, He's the big fish, right? And so, of course, he has gotten the primary attention of opposing offensive lines, opposing offensive coordinators, making sure he can't have the types of individual game-changing performances that we certainly saw him make a a few times last season, and he has been capable of in his career so far. I would also say that given the double teams he is taking, I think there is a, a positive effect that that can have on the offense, giving better easier pass rushing matchups than for the other rushers. And he's gotten some pressures this season. I think the more disappointing aspect for me has been run defense for him. He's just not been nearly as physical, stout, and aggressive holding down the edge there. So, it, you know, it's been, I don't want to say a liability per se, but just a little bit disappointed for a guy that I thought had shown me more than that last season and in previous years. And of course, he is the Chicago Bears' highest paid player right now in terms of the cap hit he is costing the team this year. I mean, the guys on the roster, they're paying Cleo Mack more money to not play on the team than Quinn to play on the team. But regardless, like among the guys still here, $17 million he is costing the team. And so we saw last season, right? Von Miller gets traded to the Los Angeles Rams midseason for was like a second and a third round pick. And part of what boosted them to the Super Bowl, right? And over the top, right? That, that, that key pass rusher they could go out and bring in. With Robert, 
you're not buying, you're not selling high per se because he's only got one sack through these six games and has been a little bit disappointing. But you know, compared to trying to trade him during the off season, there's a little bit less supply and a little bit more demand at a time of year now. Like when you're trying to trade him during free agency, teams are saying, well, do we trade for Robert Quinn and the contract he already has? Or do we go negotiate with these free agents and get him at a better dollar number that we like? Or same thing with during the NFL draft. It's like, do we trade for Robert Quinn or do we just draft this younger guy that'll be cheaper that we think could be just as good or better, right? So it, even though this offseason he was coming off of the 18 and a half sack season, maybe his value would be the most high. In some ways that could also limit the trade options for him because maybe he was overvalued and then B teams had so many other options for edge rushers that maybe they weren't as inclined to make that play. But now that you're midway through the season, if you're a team that feels like you need a pass rushing upgrade to either rebound from a rough start to the season or really put you over the top and separate from some of the other contenders, Robert Quinn becomes a much more intriguing option. Certainly there are financial challenges here where you might have to negotiate with the bears to say, okay, we'll give you more compensation if you'll agree to pay more of his salary in order for him to be able to fit under the salary cap of whatever new team might be trading for him. And certainly I'm not, I'm not intimately involved with all of every single team's most dire pressing needs. But as I looked around the league a little bit, a couple of teams that stood out to me as options and and certainly I don't expect this to be a all encompassing list. And certainly there's arguments against why these teams might not want to go for this Robert Quinn trade just yet. But like, first of all, the Rams, after doing it for Von Miller last season, stand out as another team that could use additional help and the edge rusher position that you know, the Leonard Floyd hasn't been as good this season. And they don't really have that. You know, they lost Samson Ebukam and they don't really have that true, you know, game changing complimentary pass rusher in there with him. They've rotated some different guys, but to pair them to pair him with Aaron Donald and Floyd on the other side would give Robert Quinn better one-on-one -on -one matchups that he could be more productive. It's just a matter of, you know, do the Rams want to invest in that position versus they have an other needs and other struggles on their team that maybe pass rusher wouldn't be number one priority at the trade deadline. A couple of teams, really, really that whole NFC West, maybe with, with the exception of San Francisco, but like the Cardinals, I think could always use another pass rusher and they've been struggling a little bit. Same kind of story though, is like, is, is pass rusher what they're missing? Like, is that the number one need? Probably not, but could they use another pass rusher? I think so. I'd throw Seattle in there too. I don't think the Seahawks are necessarily as all in on winning this year, but they're doing well enough with Geno that they can be contenders. I don't know if they're going to want to, again, mortgage some future to go trade for Quinn. I don't know if it's the best fit there. And, and same thing with, with the Tennessee Titans. I'll throw them in here as well. Like they're a little bit more of a pushing to really win this year type team, but I don't know where they feel like their team building process is. Do they want to go all in on 2022 and try and trade for Robert Quinn to boost their pass rush, boost their defense a little bit more and, and get them back on track a little bit more than we've seen? Hard, hard to say, but you know, there, there are options out here and it's a matter of, you know, what kind of draft pick compensation can you get? Because, you know, Robert Quinn is going to be, what, he's 32 right now and he'll turn 33 in January. So he doesn't have a long-term fit on the Bears. So they're probably going to need to get rid of him, either a trade or release after the season anyway. So if you can get, you know, a third round pick, something like that would be great value for the Bears and Robert Quinn. And it opens up more playing time for Travis Gibson and Dominic Robinson opposite uh, al Kadeen Muhammad there on that Bears defensive line. Yes, it would make the Bears worse. And all of these trading away players for draft picks would make the Bears worse right now. But I think we're in a space where we can all agree that the playoffs are not necessarily the plan or the goal right now, or they're the goal, but not realistic for where the Bears sit this season. But Quinn's, Quinn's the big name, Quinn's the more obvious name, but there's a few other guys on the roster that might end up in these conversations. And I, I want to throw out one guy later on that I don't think I've heard anybody mention as a trade candidate yet that I think could be a sneaky option for this team to deal for, you know, a late round draft pick to recoup some value next on Locked On Bears. This episode of Locked On Bears is brought to you by our new friends at Bird Dogs. No, it's not some weird genetically engineered animal that can both fly and play fetch. Bird Dogs are the makers of super comfortable shorts pants. And now Bird Dogs has launched sweatpants. It is so great. They, I've tried them on for the first time and they really fit nice. It's like they're not, they're not tight, but they're not loose. They just hug your legs perfectly. And I got to be honest, like when I first tried bird dogs, I was skeptical about the liner in the pants. I've never been like a, you know, like a, a tight sort of lining in the pants type of guy, if you know what I mean. Like I like to have it loose down there. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like, am I going to feel too constricted by these liners in bird dogs? But I'll tell you what, from the first time I tried them on, I was so much more comfortable than I thought it'd be, not constricted at all, just 
nice, secure, but but roomy enough for everything you got going on downstairs. You got to try them for yourself. Bird dogs are great. Go to birddogs.com, enter in our promo code locked on, and they'll throw in a free bird dogs rope hat. That's birddogs.com, promo code locked on, and boom, a free bird dogs rope hat with your purchase of bird dogs. The most comfortable shorts, pants, and sweatpants with built in liners. You will not take these things off, I promise you. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's a great way to reach a huge network of people because most of us, I think, are on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm assuming you might be on LinkedIn as well. And if you're not, I guarantee you know 5, 10, 15 people that are on LinkedIn, if not more. Once you post your job, they have simple tools like screening questions that make it really easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the quali qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We know Robert Quinn is the name that really we've been talking about a potential Bears trade for months, right? From the day they traded Khalil Mack and even before they traded Khalil Mack, we wondered if Robert Quinn would have been traded last offseason. He, he kind of he, he skipped the voluntary stuff, but stuck around and is, is still around on the team. But he's not the only guy. I mean, he's kind of overshadowed the, the whole trade conversation as the big fish there, but not the only option here. And the name I'm going to throw out here, I think we've already seen the sort of like speculative rumors that aren't like really reported, but just saying like, you know, people just saying, hey, this would be something that, that could work. So it's not a brand new name, but I think it's important that we, we're careful about how we talk through it. Because if you haven't heard someone say David Montgomery is a trade target and you hear that for the first time, you might immediately think, what? No way. Like David Montgomery is the Bears leading rusher. He's the engine of the offense. He's a lot of the identity of the offense. He's a leader on the team. He's a guy they look they look up to, the guy the running back room looks to, a guy that they've been able to rely on, not only this season, but throughout his career as a just a kind of a go-to. You need to pick up short yardage. You need to pick up yards on the ground. He can find a way to turn a zero-yard gain into a four-yard gain ever so consistently. And we've heard this offseason, the Bears coaching staff, even into the year, rave about how much they like David Montgomery. Matt Eberflus made him the honorary captain for week one, kind of the first player that he stepped up into that role. They've talked about how they like the way he goes about his work and how hard he works and the way he carries himself around the team. Like the Bears have shown every reason that they like David Montgomery and every reason why they wouldn't necessarily want to trade David Montgomery. And I, and I think that's important context in this conversation that I don't think it's a, it's a matter of like the Bears saying, oh, screw this guy. We don't want him. We don't need him. Let's just get him out of here. But when you start to think about it a little bit less, I guess, less emotionally and a little bit more coldly, a little bit more like football is a business, roster building is a business, and sometimes what's best for the long-term health of the team might be something that doesn't feel like the right decision or the good decision, but can be. And I think it's very a very similar conversation about like we'd had with Khalil Mack. And I was a little bit surprised how quickly the fan base came around on the Khalil Mack trade and just sort of accepted that. I think correctly, I, just, I was anticipating that that would be a tougher sell than it was, but it seemed like the the damage control, the, the, the crowd control on that was all very sort of quickly disseminated that, yeah, like you understood that Right. The problem was not they didn't want Robert Quinn. The problem was Robert Quinn didn't fit with where they were in a team building process, and, the, and it's going to free up so much salary cap space next off season. With with David Montgomery, it's a similar feeling where it's like nobody wants to get rid of David Montgomery. That's not the point. But the math sort of adds up for the Bears that trading him might be the best consideration for the team at the trade deadline. With with an important caveat here. The idea here is that David Montgomery is set to be a free agent this upcoming offseason. His contract, his rookie contract, expires at the end of this year, and he will hit the open market. And if the Bears aren't necessarily sure or keen on 
how much they want to pay him in a contract extension then and, and are maybe preparing. Like, if the Bears have it in their mind that Khalil Herbert's good, we like Tristan Ebner, we can get other running backs, we're going to let David Montgomery walk this offseason, then you absolutely should trade him at the trade deadline. That's sort of the the caveat, the context here. If Ryan Poles is sitting there saying, no, we want to re-sign David Montgomery and we're willing to we're willing to compete for him in the market and pay him market value, I don't think that's the right decision. But if you if you do, if you if you want to re-sign him, then there's no need to trade him. But the idea of trading him is that you get value for him before he walks for free in the free agent market. So normally the the, the argument, the debate is like, well, do you trade him or do you wait and get a compensatory pick. You know, if he goes and signs a big contract with another team that adds into the compensatory pick formula and you could get, you know, a third, fourth, fifth round draft pick back for him in free agency. And so you would be motivated to then just kind of let him walk. But the the flip side of that is this year, all we've talked about is how much cap space the bears are going to have this off season. That means they're going to spend a lot of money this off season on some amount of free agents and contract extensions. And so the bears will likely spend so much in free agency that they won't be really having realistic chance to bring compensatory picks back. And so any player you let walk like David Montgomery is likely not going to get you a draft pick in return. So get that draft pick in return now, as opposed to letting him walk in free agency for nothing. Again, it's sort of contingent on what he's going to do in free agency, what the team wants to do. But you can imagine that David Montgomery is going to want as much money as he can get. And, and modern NFL team building says, don't pay running backs big money. It's just not Worth, there are only a, a few running backs in the league that are worth big money. And I, as much as we love David Montgomery, he is not one of those running backs. He's not a 12 plus million dollar a year running back. He might be an $8 million a year running back, but even then you have Khalil Herbert and you have Tristan and Ebert. And it's not about David Montgomery not being good enough. It's about you having other options and wanting to invest that money at other positions that are more impactful. And so if there's a team out there that wants an extra running back into the room to make that playoff push again, and you can look around and see, a handful of teams. I think the Rams are going to be on every list for every player that we say, but the Rams could use a running back. The Buccaneers running game has been pretty atrocious. A lot of that's been offensive line, but Fournette hasn't been great for them. You know, the Dolphins, maybe the Eagles with Miles Sanders is finally coming around. But if you want to add one more back into that rotation there, the Chargers have had some injuries at running back and somebody to pair with Eckler is more the true like ground game and Eckler, the receiver, I think would be fun there. Even the Arizona Cardinals, maybe bring to help boost their running game as well. There seem to be buyers to the trade deadline. So throw them in there as well. Like any of those teams, we would be talking a low return on investment for Montgomery, right? Fifth round pick, sixth round pick, fourth round pick at best, but probably more like fifth or sixth or a combination of those. But that's better than nothing if you let him walk in free agency this season. So yeah, it might make the team worse right now, but if he's going to be gone next year anyway, and you have Khalil Herbert and you like Tristan Ebner, you can call up Darrington Evans from the practice squad. It sucks. Just like trading Kalua Mack sucks, but you'll be fine. And that extra draft pick is more valuable than, again, the nothing you get if he leaves in free agency because we're expecting that the compensatory pick formula will be weighted against the Bears for all the money they spend next year, perhaps with the money that they, they've saved from not re-signing David Montgomery to a bigger contract. Those two are kind of the main two that like seem the right mix of would make sense for the team and might have some value to some other teams. But I want to throw out a couple other names here. Some... Some not that likely, and, and one that I think is a sneaky pick for a guy that other teams could look at that the Bears wouldn't miss nearly as much. And we'll get through them and see kind of what other options are out there next on Locked On Bears. We here at the Locked On Bears podcast love to play daily fantasy football with our friends at Prize Picks because Prize Picks is a better way to do daily fantasy sports. Because unlike the other types of daily fantasy, Prize Picks puts you in complete control. There's no competing against other players. There's no other people whose lineups are going to affect whether you win or lose. It's you versus the house. You pick two to five players, and if they'll score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, and you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry, not just for Bears games, but any of your sporting events across almost literally every single professional sports league there is. Entries are super quick and easy. You make them literally 60 seconds or less. And when you're ready to withdraw, it's safe, fast, and easy as well. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% deposit match up to $100 with our promo code LOCKED ON. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. You deposit $50, Prize Picks gives you $50. You understand? Don't forget to enter that promo code LOCKED ON when you sign up for an instant deposit match 
up to $100. So besides Robert Quinn or David Montgomery, the name that comes to mind first to think about at the trade deadline, which again, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying the Bears want it to happen. I'm not saying other teams are going to step up and pony up to it. But given how the situation with Roquan Smith deteriorated, you know, is that a, is that a situation you consider for pretty much all the same reasons we talked about with David Montgomery, right? If if you feel like, boy, we were so far apart from Roquan Smith in negotiations and he doesn't have an agent and he's a wild card, like what's going to happen with him in the offseason? Likely, you know, you would franchise tag and try and trade him as opposed to letting him walk and just getting nothing for him. But if that trade conversation happens now and you get a desperate team, like it's hard to predict what the trade value will be for Roquan Smith on the franchise tag in the offseason. Again, if the Bears aren't able to reach some sort of long-term agreement with him. And it comes back to some of the Robert Quinn stuff where it's like, if you're a team that needs a linebacker, are you going to trade for and have to pay Roquan Smith when there are other free agents available that you could sign or the NFL draft still in front of you, right? Like there's a little bit more of a supply there and less uh, to meet the demand of the offseason. Whereas right now in the middle of the season, there is not a supply of, you know, sometimes Pro Bowl caliber linebackers available to bolster your team. Now, I, I don't know if teams will be less inclined to trade a first round pick for Roquan Smith, you know, for example, halfway through the season knowing that you also then have to reach a contract extension with him. And this is where it becomes tricky, right? What is his trade value right now? And is that more or less than what it would be in the off season if he was franchise tagged and then tried to trade? I mean, you, what you can't do is just purely let him walk as a free agent. And, you know, there wouldn't be a compensatory pick conversation to even be had there. You got to trade, you got to get something for him if you're not going to sign him to a long-term contract. But, you know, you can look around and teams like, you know, the Cardinals could use a linebacker. The Seahawks, I think, could use another off-ball linebacker. The Chargers... The Dolphins, I mean, ironic to trade him to the Chargers with Roquan Smith, but I don't think the Chargers have draft picks left to, 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 trade, to trade for somebody like Roquan Smith. But, like, is it in the conversation there? Certainly, you would be left very, very barren at linebacker. But we'd all like to see Jack Sanborn. I mean, it might get ugly sometimes having an undrafted rookie free agent out there, but it would be fun to see what Jack Sanborn could do. Again, don't think the Bears are in nearly as strong of a position to trade Roquan as they would be to withstand trading Robert Quinn or David Montgomery, but... It's something I, I keep in the mix there. The name that I've been holding on to that I just can't help but wonder if a team could call up the Bears and say, hey, like, late round draft pick, can we get Riley Reef from you? Not that Riley Reef is like some bona fide great offensive tackle, but I think if Riley Reef were a free agent right now, the Los Angeles Rams would call him up three days ago you know, or weeks ago and said, hey, like, we need help on our offensive line. Can you come and play for us, right? Like, the, a couple of these teams are having some real offensive line trouble. I already mentioned the other one, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have had a ton of injuries on their offensive line, right? Can you bring in Riley Reef and throw him at a tackle spot and solidify that or kick kick somebody else inside and put Robert or put Riley Reef on the old line? He's not going to command a third round pick, a fourth round pick. We're talking seventh round pick, sixth round pick, whatever. But that's that's more value than he's giving you right now. Like he's your backup offensive tackle, but you have Alex Leatherwood coming back from the reserve non-football injury list. I don't necessarily trust him as like a great backup, but again, if you get a six or seventh round pick for a backup offensive lineman that you draft, you signed in free agency before training camp and really hasn't had to do anything for your team, might as well, right? I mean, might as well take extra draft picks where you can and find one of these teams that just has a ton of offensive line injuries and, and see if you can get a little bit of something for a guy like Riley Reef. Again, it's not much, but I do think there's a certain desperation for some teams and he's been a consistent proven veteran in this league that... You know, he's not going to be great, but you kind of know what you're getting. And he doesn't doesn't have a long term future in Chicago. And his, his contract is super incentive laden anyway. So like it's just it's a one year deal. Could you move on and get get something for him? Maybe. I mean, that'd be something that would be interesting to to explore. I also w- would have thought had the Bears not had, had Cody Whitehair not suffered an injury and gone in injured reserve. I, I wonder if he would have been in this conversation. Not that you know, that Cody Whitehair is bad or that, you know, there's no reason the team would want him. Like, of course, like he was maybe their, certainly their most experienced offensive lineman, but maybe their most consistent offensive lineman for portions of this season. But Cody Whitehair is kind of the old guard of the starter. He was of the starters. He was brought in, you know, by the, by the previous regime and his cap hit this year is $12 million. It goes up to $14 million next year and $13 million the year after that. And he's, you know, not a, not a young player, anymore. He's not old, old just yet, but 
you know, he, he crossed over that 30 f- threshold in July. He's not, you know, he, he'll still probably be good for another couple seasons. So there's no rush to like, you got to get rid of him this year because he's bad, right? Or you got to get rid of him this year because he's so old. But, you know, if you could have gotten some value for him and saved some money, like you have, you have Lucas Patrick playing at left guard and not, not well, but like you have him, you have Michael Schofield there at left guard. And you also have two guards that you drafted and have stuck around on the practice squad, at least one of them that, you know, you like some of the upside of there that just like long-term, you know, is Cody Whitehair the Bears guard two years from today? Probably not. So if, if you could get some value for him at the trade deadline, that would have been something to think about or consider. Again, you don't, you don't want to be in a position where you make the Bears offensive line worse. And I realize in the grand scheme of things, like having the best possible offensive line for Justin Fields is more important than the fifth round pick you would get for Cody Whitehair. But I don't know how, how much of a drastic drop off is there from Whitehair to, to Michael Schofield, right? Like that you have bigger questions right now at, at center. And when Cody Whitehair's at, at left guard, bigger questions at your tackle positions, like it becomes less of a concern, but I also understand like, yeah, you don't want to make this offensive line worse, but Hey, maybe there are other younger offensive linemen out there that the bears could look at bringing in, not because you're trying to trade to win more games this season, but just maybe acquire young players. Or you look at a team like the Carolina Panthers that fired their head coach and might be in willing more of a, a, a fire sale type position or other teams that might have young players that just haven't they've been kind of stuck on the bench and haven't earned bigger roles in the offense. So we might take a look this week. Well, I've got to still put together a list and see if there's enough enough meaningful players on the list. But I'd like to, tentatively planning on doing a podcast, looking at players and other teams that maybe the Bears should call after the deadline just to get more younger players on their roster and take advantage of you know where guys are slipping through the cracks on other franchises. So make sure you come on back for that. Hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening to the Lockdown Bears podcast or on that Lockdown Bears YouTube channel. Click that little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified every time we post a new video for you five days a week. We're here for your daily in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today. If you're looking for your second listen, the Locked On Podcast Network is your team every day. Every day. Go check out all of our other Locked On Chicago sports shows. Locked On Bulls, Locked On Cubs, Locked On White Sox, Locked On Blackhawks, plus Locked On Fighting Illini, Locked On Northwestern Wildcats, and more. So check some of those out. And coming back tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Bears and another opportunity for you to bear down.